Hi there. In this video, we'll go over five tips that I think will tremendously help your SimpleSharp and SimpleSharp Pro development journey. Tip number one is going to be solution folders. You can see an example of this in our Solution Explorer pane in the top right here, where we have the source folder and a test folder. This is a very standard way to separate your actual core functionality from your unit test, which we covered in a previous lesson. And just to show you how you can do that, we'll delete the one that I added there. You want to go up to your solution item in the tree view, right click, add, and click on new solution folder. Now we can give it a name and we're done. Tip number two, I would say it's a very common request or uh, a common goal to share functionality between a simple sharp library and a simple sharp pro application. To do this, I would separate the functionality that you're writing away from the Crestron context and then share that project from two other projects that represent your Simple Sharp library project and your Simple Sharp Pro application itself. Now, if you're just writing a library at the time and you're not writing anything specific for a Simple Sharp Pro application, that's fine. The way that you reference the core library itself is the only thing that's going to change and where I would suggest if possible, and this is actually one of my upcoming tips, if possible, reference the project rather than the DLL from the build output itself. And I'll get into why that is in a little bit, but just to show you how I would set things up, let's go ahead and add one project. That's going to be our simple sharp library project. We want it in the source folder, so we want to add it there. New project. We'll choose the .NET Framework one for this. And we'll give it a suffix of .simple, just to make it clear. Now if we go ahead and create that, we can do what we normally do and add the Crestron NuGet package for the simple share library. Install the latest stable version, accept the licensing. Now that we have our simple sharp library project, we want to go and add a reference and we'll add a project reference to the test library project itself. And this will give us access to anything from the public interface in this project. Next up, what we want to do is what I normally do for my simple sharp libraries with simple plus is we want to put as much functionality as possible in here that pertains to the logic that we're trying to achieve. And then our simple project is just going to act as a translation layer to translate all of the events and everything into a simple plus compatible form. So that's pretty simple. I put everything in one file in this case, just so that it's easier to see all in one. Um, but I would really suggest moving these to their own files in production. And once you've done that, then you basically create an instance of this. And you're good to go. Once you've implemented everything, you're going, to, you're going to build the project. And the nice thing about project references is that anything which changes in your project that is referenced, that output automatically gets referenced by the build output for your other projects that depend on the other projects. Now, another tip which brings us to tip number four, I would always suggest doing a rebuild 
because the IDE is not responsible for creating the CLZ. That is actually the NuGet package, which contains some other host build events. And the IDE is very particular on whether it needs to build a project or not. So if you're always in the habit of going to rebuild your solution, then you can guarantee that everything is going to be rebuilt and you'll always get a new CLZ or a CPZ. Tip number five, when you're doing things like this, let's look at our core driver, which takes an interface. Now I did this on purpose and I took an iLogger interface that I created, which is basically going to implement a method called log, it doesn't return anything, but it takes a string as a message. So a very, very basic implementation that we would normally see for any logging messages. Um, in production, you probably want to use things like Serilog, but I think this is a great example because it illustrates a very key point. If we're logging on the Crestron control system, then if you want to log to the console, that is different than the console that you would use for a desktop application or anything of that nature. So instead of introducing console.writeline or Crestron console write line calls in your actual code. You use dependency injection to take an implementation that specifies that functionality instead. So now when you're writing your simple sharp library, you can create an implementation of iLogger. Let's just separate these two out for now. Let's call it uh, Crestron Logger, Console Logger. Now we can implement that interface and this is going to go Crestron. Uh, I'm just going to specify the full thing rather than adding a using state or uh, directive at the top. Dot print print line message. So now the benefit of doing it this way is that if you wanted to write a simple desktop application to test this functionality, or if you're doing anything outside of the context of Crestron, you can choose how this logs everything inside your actual core functionality. So now from the context of a simple sharp Library, let's say we wanted to log to the Crestron console. You basically just pass in an instance of your Crestron console logger. And now this instance takes a logger of this type and it'll let write to your Crestron console. Now, if you're writing a desktop application, let's just pretend I'm not writing this in our simple sharp library project. Uh, Windows console logger. Then you can do console dot write line. And in your uh, desktop application, you do the same thing, but you pass in a console logger that's specific to the platform that you're working with. And then you don't have to share a Crestron specific library with things that don't use any Crestron at all. And it also provides some extensibility so you can create your own core drivers if you wanted. And if other code in this particular project used this core driver, then you can kind of change and extend the functionality that way. So the key thing, if you're going to write for extensibility here is to always program against the interfaces whenever it makes sense to do so rather than the concrete implementations themselves. And lastly, as a bonus tip, I think it goes without saying there are some benefits to using source control. So you should definitely get into the habit of using that or introducing that into your business practices. Things like Git 
are a great way to manage changes, versioning. Um, you can integrate it with CI CD pipelines and many other things. So with that, I hope you learned a few things and thanks for watching.